Most of our gospel music has been created by people in the LGBTQ community. As someone who preached for years, churches are filled with people from the LGBTQ plus community. The moment someone may come out or express themselves in that way, they're immediately shunned. I'm trying to grapple, not really a question, but so much your opinions, like the dichotomy of sexual orientation, faith, and the black church. Daniel, that's a great question. Not really a question. One part that is particularly problematic is the word shun. Can you be accused of being a friend of sinners? Because if the answer to that question is no, then you're doing it wrong. So the first phrase of just that sense of shun, regardless of where someone's theological position, it has no place in no terms of the way that that works. There's a lot of cultural biases that shape the way why it is that people can at the same time benefit and take in uh, contributions from a community while shunning them at the same time. And it takes a lot of smoke and mirrors and sleight of hand to make that work at the same time. And it's a real tragedy that is a, a grievous thing that we ultimately ought to really, you know, be weeping and lamenting over. You know, in the black church, it is a don't ask, don't tell kind of mentality. And most of our gospel music has been created by people in the LGBTQ community. The Black mm. Church has a problem with homophobia. The Black Church needs to get over it because they know they would never be able to field the choir. And I think it's frustrating even more for people when it, it is preached against in the pulpit, practiced in the pulpit, mm -hmm. and openly accepted that that dichotomy and that confusion, because it's like, you preach against it, but you allow it. Right. Or you preach against it, but you participate. Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? Right. And it causes confusion. And I think the challenge is that we don't know how to engage with our sexual identity and then engage with scripture in, in a robust way. Mm -hmm. You know, I always talk to pastors about when you talk about intimacy, all your sermon illustrations are husband and wife. Mm -hmm. Intimacy is found outside of sexuality. If you have single people in the audience, if you have people who you want to be celibate, whether they're LGBTQ or heterosexual, you're not providing a space for intimacy. You're like saying, oh, you can't have intimacy. Right. Only this is reserved for married people. And so it just seems like a hopeless situation. Like you're putting people in a possible situation and they're not able to thrive and be full people. I think that's one aspect, but also I just think, like you said, we have to deal with the hypocrisy of it. Sometimes what we hate in ourselves, we, we mm. project That's true. through yeah. on the pulpit. And I think when people are wrestling with their own sexual identity and things they hate about themselves in general, it doesn't just have to be sexuality. It comes out in their, in what they proclaim as if they're talking to themselves in a mirror and not talking to the congregation, yeah. right? And I think a lot of times that's what you see in when there's proclamation of one thing and participation as well, that people are struggling with their own selves and what they hate about themselves because of cultural norms they project when they're preaching.